Hello again, YouTube, and welcome back to episode two of Pastor Stu's Book Review. This week we're going to be looking at the book None Greater, The Undomesticated Attributes of God, which was released in March of 2019, written by Matthew Barrett. Now, Matthew Barrett is the Associate Professor of Christian Theology at Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary and founder and executive editor of Credo Magazine. He's written a number of books, including one entitled uh, Reformation Theology, a systematic summary, which I mentioned since it does have an impact on the book that he's written here that we're going to be covering. I'll link his Amazon page below so you can get a look at what else he's written uh, and get a good idea of what kind of material he has. He's also host of the Credo Pro Podcast, which I'll also post a link to below, uh, where he covers issues of theology with modern day theologians. Uh, so uh, really kind of an all-around, all-encompassing uh, material that he provides. Um, as far as the premise behind the book is he's aiming to confront the issue of people domesticating God, which, as he sees it, has become a major issue in most of our modern day churches. Uh, when he talks about domesticating him, uh, he means that God's been tamed down, he's been smoothed uh, to a point where people are willing to accept him because he looks more like the creature, being humanity, than the creature looks like him. Um, so that's been his premise uh, as far as approaching this book. So he's hoping uh, to do it in a way where it makes it understandable for churchgoers, pastors, and beginning Bible students, which he says directly in his uh, introduction. Uh, his suggested solution, um, he returns to the early church fathers, uh, specifically Ansem, uh, Augustine, or Augustine, and Aquinas. And he believes that we can restore the godness of God and return to viewing God as someone than whom none greater can be conceived. This is going to be a very familiar phrase as he repeats it constantly throughout each chapter. He mentions this at least once, um, if not more, throughout that text. Uh, it is largely from these early church fathers that he's going to pull much of his in inspiration. Um, so that's his suggested solution, is that by returning back to some of these older writers, he can we can get to a point of reclaiming some of these attributes that we've lost in God. The format, as far as he lays out the book, each chapter is introduced by asking a question uh, which is connected to the trait that Barrett is attempting to explain. Uh, the chapters and their theological trait will appear so you can get a glimpse of what to expect. I'll show that on the screen here. Barrett then provides biblical passages and quotes from other theologians, past and present, to lead into the discussion of each trait. Uh, the rest of this chapter is laid out about how you would expect any theology book to be laid out uh, through the use of biblical stories, historical figures, and personal experiences. He attempts to explain each attribute of God in the best way that he can. It's no small task tackling a theology book. Um, you know, when you enter into the realm of trying to explain God to people, there is no perfect way to do it. We do the best we can with the language that we have. And he mentions that uh, with regards to, he does approach it with humility in terms of understanding that, you know, you do the best you can when you're talking about God, because none of us have it figured out. So as far as the overall review, we're gonna enter right into that. As I explained in the last video, I based these reviews on three different components. The first being theological, which means does it offer an accurate portrayal of God uh, to what we find in the pages of scripture? Is it practical? Basically, is this book easy to understand and apply to everyday living? And discipling. Is this text a good one to use for training up believers? Each category based out of five and their combined average uh, forms the basis of the total review. With that being said, let's just get started. And we are gonna start with theological and I debated over whether I wanted to start here or end here because there was a lot of good uh, stuff that I think Barrett covers in this book. But there were a couple areas where, because of theological differences, um, just personal perspective about uh, scripture and God, where I think he misses the mark a bit. Um, and we'll explain what those are here in a little bit. Um, keep in mind, I have no expert degree as a theologian. Um, you know, that's the, the technicalities of theology are not a strong point, really. Um, and I don't claim that what I believe theologically is 100% right, uh, so I'm sure that as you listen to this review, you may think that Barrett's right in what he shares, where I may be a little off, but it, you kind of got to split the difference, uh, study it out, and see what conclusion you reach. What I offer here is largely based on personal studies, direction uh, from uh, mentors and uh, other people that I've worked under, uh, experiences and conclusions that I've reached 
Uh, and I don't expect everyone to hold to exactly what I believe. That be a bit unrealistic, to be honest. What Matthew Barrett presents in this book is largely influenced by his reform background. Um, that is important to remember as we move forward in this review and take a look at what he's saying. Um, that being said, theologically the book presents a strong representation of what he proposes as an issue um, in Christian thought today. Uh, for the most part, there is great agreement from me on the subject and how it's tackled, but there were chapters that I did wrestle with. Um, and not to the point of uh, they were really challenging and they really changed the way I view things, but I wrestled with them in the sense that I'm not sure how he reaches the conclusion that he reaches. Um, he does successfully tackle traits of God that have been softened to a large degree. Uh, I appreciated greatly his uh, appreci his presentation of God's uh, seity, um, which comes from the Latin ase, meaning from himself, where Barrett explains that God is life in and of himself. And on that basis, he's got to be self-existent and self-sufficient. Um, sometimes I think it's easy for us to believe that God needs us and that God requires us to be around, but he doesn't. And that's the beauty of grace, that's the beauty of the relationship that we have with God, is that point that he doesn't need us, and yet he's created us, he loves us, he cherishes us. Um, building on that reality, he does. Barrett does well to explain the truth by offering strong biblical support and bringing clarity that a God who needs others is incapable of being a God that others need. And without a God who is self-sufficient, we as people would have nothing firm to lean on. And that's important to remember, that if God was in need of us, he's not really a God worth serving or worshiping. Um, so I really appreciated that. It was a very interesting take um, and well explained in this book. So uh, I really, uh, I applaud him on that. I also appreciated his take on God as simplicity. Now this was an interesting idea. A um, little tough to, to wrap my, my head around as I read through it, but as I read through the chapter, it made sense. Uh, Barrett focuses heavily on God's essence when it comes to traits that we apply to him. In our lives, it's easy to compartmentalize or to set things apart in different categories and ascribe different percentages of traits to people. But so like x percent of love and x percent of patience and on and on and we tend to do that to god as well but what matthew barrett does is he reminds us that when it comes to god he's 100 percent every trait and so instead of over complicating it and trying to figure out well is god more love or is god more justice or is god more wrath he says god is 100 percent perfect in all of those characteristics life light hope joy justice all of those, they're all traits that God exhibits perfectly, and as frail and perfect people, we've, we need God to be that way. Uh, Barrett makes it very clear that God is not compartmentalized like we seem to enjoy making him, but rather all traits at all times. Um, it is a bit tough as you're reading through it to really comprehend it, um, and it is, it's one of those things where <laughs> it's tough, but it makes sense. Um, that God is 100% perfect, uh, the perfect uh, essence of all of those things. Now for the things I struggled with. I wrestled greatly with two uh, key chapters in his book, ultimately reaching the conclusion that I can't make the leaps that he did, I can't get to the conclusions that he reached. And this is where some may disagree with me. Um, but the first chapter, uh, the first issue I take is with his chapter, Does God Have emotions, which focuses on what the term is impassibility. Um, in this chapter, Barrett suggests that God doesn't have emotions, focusing specifically on emotions like suffering. Barrett suggests he's not one who experiences suffering like we do, um, and we would do well to view God without such human expressions of emotion. Um, he uses the imagery of a person who escapes a house fire only to realize that their loved ones are still trapped in there. Um, and then asks, you know, who do you really want to save you? As the community's watching, do you want the woman who's yelling and screaming and ripping her hair out? Or do you want the firefighter who's got a cool head and is going to be that heroic figure? And he likens God to that firefighter. Um, my, my issue with that, and no analogy is perfect when explaining God, but my real issue here is just because an individual is cool-headed or doesn't exhibit or show such strong emotion doesn't mean they don't have emotion and so I think it was a bad analogy and I don't know that I can get to the point of thinking that God is emotionless um, 
because we do see things in scripture and about God's suffering and, and regrets and things like that. And Barrett does touch on this to say that if God expresses emotion, we have to tie it in with the reality that, uh, like when they say that God has hands and feet, it's the same type of idea. And I don't know if I can make that leap. I'm sure that if you disagree with me, you'll let me know. Um, and But I just can't get there. Um, that being said, though, I'm sure that many would agree with Barrett, but I just I can't get there. Um, I don't believe that holding a view where God experiences emotions necessarily reduces his godness. Um, I would say that if you go to the point of saying that God becomes paralyzed or God becomes unable to be God because of his emotions, yeah, that God's not that way. Back to the idea of God's essence, God would exhibit these emotions perfectly uh, in a way that doesn't hinder his, his justice, it doesn't hinder his decisions, it doesn't hinder his wisdom. Um, and you can hold those emotions without allowing them to impact the way you act or the way you treat uh, individuals. So I would disagree in that with him. Um, and, you know, that's typical, I think, with, with any theology book. You're not going to agree 100% with everyone's theology. Um, and, you know, it's just the way that it works. Secondly, and this one was probably the biggest uh, problem I had... Um, he, makes, he takes a stance in chapter 10, that it's, which is entitled, Is God All-Powerful, All-Knowing, and All-Wise? Where he focuses on omnipotence, omniscience, and omnisapience. I'm, I think I'm saying that right. Um, this is a chapter that's heavy on Reformed theology. Um, and the reason for my rejection of what he is proposing is he's suggesting that all things, good and evil, come from the hand of God. Uh, in the chapter, he presents an image, God, that a lot of people reject because it comes across as almost a bipolar god. Uh, this god that is just um, really capable and, and the author of, of evil, but he cares about you. Like, he will put evil things in your life, but he does love you and he does care about you. And he kind of goes back and forth in this chapter um, with regards to using Job as the example, to say, just like Job, where God permitted Satan to work in his life and, and to do all those things, I would say God permitting things into our lives and God authoring those things are very different. Um, and he relies heavily on predestination and that type of thing. Um, he specifically states on page 196 that if you are a child of God, then Paul has this to say to you. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that happens in your life that has not been planned by God before the foundation of the world. Now this is where I have a real issue. Uh, I have personally witnessed uh, the amount of damage a statement like this can do to people that are new to the faith or are on the edge of just on that line between uh, am I going to trust God or not. To make a statement like this to someone who has suffered any kind of abuse in their past, uh, to say that, well, yeah, God did that to you, it sends people off the edge. and. This goes further than just, you know, things like Jesus saying in the Bread of Life uh, statement in John um, to weed out people. This is, this is just not good. This is not good theology, on my, in my opinion. Um, and so, to put this in God's hands, to say that God planned and orchestrated these atrocities, uh, whether it's physical, sexual, or emotional abuse, I don't believe that's within the nature of God, and I don't think you can say that God is the author of these things, because it contradicts scripture to say that God is capable of evil things. Um, so that's just something that theologically, a lot of people are going to be on board with, with Barrett in this. I'm just not there. Um, and it could be influenced by a number of things, just upbringing, what I've been taught, what I've been trained with. but. To see God as the one who writes out and orchestrates and puts evil into people's lives, I can't get there. Um, so those are the two real issues that I have there. Um, I will say that the good outweighs the bad in this in this theology book. Um, because one thing I did like is throughout the entire entirety of the book, he does present this idea that you need all of these attributes of God. Like, you can't pick and choose and take them apart. 
they all build on each other they all rely on each other uh, and you'll see him do that throughout the entirety where he'll talk about um, like God's aseity, his self-sufficiency, and he'll tie it in with other characteristics and traits that he covers, like his justice, his omnipotence, his, you know, that all of these things complement each other very well. Overall, I think out of 12 chapters of theology, Barrett offers a solid view of God and hits on some really key issues that need to be remembered when we talk about the enormity of God and his nature and his character. Um, the two chapters that I took issue with are going to be disputed even in these comments or in discussion. Um, but, you know, obviously I ask that if you do disagree with me and, and that you do agree with Barrett, you know, let's be respectful to one another. It's not about fighting and, you know, that type of thing. But um, I could be wrong. Um, but as far as the theological aspect, because of those two things, um, I, I'm going to rate it a 4 out of 5 on, on the theological scale. Just because, you know, with 10 out of 12 chapters being really good material and um, really valuable, uh, you know, I can't rank it really low because there's just, <laughs> this is just differing opinions uh, when it comes to these things. As for the, the next stage, practicality, these next couple are, are much shorter, but I really wanted to touch on the theological aspect because it is a theology book, um, just to cover what issues I had and why. Um, but for practicality, this is tough, uh, just because anytime you're dealing with a theology book, it's hard to give like a hands-on, um, you know, let's pick this up and use it type thing. Um, aside from your devotional life or your thought life or your prayer life, uh, these are things that, you know, you're not going to go out and be able to apply these things in your daily life. Uh, so basing it on practicality, I looked at this more in the sense of how easy was it for the everyday person to understand um, and I think he does a pretty good job here I think when you're talking about theological aspects and you're using words like aseity and you know I'm probably pronouncing that wrong anyway um, and impassibility and things like that you're getting into some easy to misunderstand concepts um, but I think Barrett does a great job of trying to bring it down to regular language. So I definitely give him, uh, I give him a four out of five on, on practicality as well. Um, and he uses personal stories and he does well with pulling from scripture to, to reinforce his points for the most part. Um, and I think he still maintains the integrity of what he's trying to communicate um, without twisting or uh, stretching scripture in any way. Um, even on those areas where I disagree with him, um, I think he uses scripture effectively uh, to back his point. It's just the interpretation of those scriptures are are different. Um, and then finally for discipling. Um, we obviously want to look at the potential that this has for training people. Um, so whether it's in a Sunday school class or a small group. Um, and this one was tough. Uh, I would say that this book offers great material for an introduction to God type of class, obviously with uh, personal theologies or denominational theologies, you may have to adjust some of the stuff that he uses. So like for impassibility and for, you know, the omniscient uh, or the omnipotent chapter, you know, you may have to pull other sources that line up better with an Arminian type idea if that's where you're at. Um, if you are reformed, then this is probably going to line up pretty closely with what you believe. Um, but it can be an issue depending on age, uh, a person's background, and the spiritual maturity of the person learning from it. Um, would I hand this book to a brand new believer? Probably not. Uh, it's not that, it's not that level uh, for, for people. Um, people that are wrestling with God and people that are just trying to figure out their relationship with God, I wouldn't hand this to them. Not alone. Um, but to walk through it with them in a one-on-one -on -one mentorship type thing, it could be effective. Um, so because of the difficulty of it as a theology book, um, I'm going to rate it at a lower three and a half out of five uh, for discipleship possibilities. Um, I think if you've got a really deep group, um, it's a good book to, to discuss, uh, to present. Um, so as far as the maturing Christian, I think it's good. Um, the, the brand new... Christian is probably not going to 
be able to, to sit through and, and process all of this stuff. Uh, so overall score, as I look back and you know take into account the three scores of four out of five for theology, uh, the four out of five for practicality, and the three and a half out of five for discipleship, I'm going to give this book uh, a review of 3.8 out of 5 uh, is my review on it. So just some concluding thoughts. Matthew Barrett's uh, None Greater, The Undomesticated Attributes of God, accomplishes tasks to restore the godness of God, even amidst a few theological disagreements on my end. I appreciate Barrett's focus of helping readers understand the importance of all these characteristics working together. Even though I may not agree with him theologically, he keeps central to his whole book, the reality that you can't pick and choose which attributes of God you want to follow. Uh, you have to take God as a whole, so if you're big into theology, I recommend you pick this book up. Um, definitely to see a different uh, point of view. Uh, it may approach some things a little differently than you're used to. Um, but, you know, if you're ready to, to take that step and confront some things, definitely uh, with this, pick it up. Um, so tell me what you think below. Have you read this book? What were your thoughts about it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Just you know, be respectful. That's all we ask. And what would you re recommend that I read and review in the future? Uh, you can post your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you like this material, I definitely encourage you to to click that subscribe button and that like and like the video. And just so you have an idea of what we're aiming for next week. Uh, next week we're going to be taking a look at a book by Christine. I hope I'm getting her name right. Aroni Sign which is entitled The Gift of Wonders, Creative Practices for Delighting in God. So, until then, keep the faith, and always remember that you are deeply cherished. Blessings.